Welcome to the Topological Mechanics Lab at Leiden University. My name is Vincenzo Vitelli, and today's lecture will be about mechanical prototypes. They share a common feature with the electronic system that you've been studying so far. They are topologically protected. In fact, there is an ongoing effort to translate key ideas in topological quantum matter to mechanical engineering, and more broadly, to the design of soft topological materials at h bar equals zero. Let me illustrate some of the key ideas with a simple example. I'm holding in my hands a chain. This structure has been assembled very easily by taking a transparent plastic rod, I hope you can see it, to which uh, green are, uh, rotors are attached and they are free to rotate around these pivots. Now the rotors are themselves coupled by red rigid bars. If you replace the rigid bars by springs, you obtain exactly a structure that was analyzed recently by Kane and Lubensky to point out some similarities between vibrational modes in classical systems and electronic states in topological insulators. One of their key findings was that this structure has a gapped vibrational spectrum. Now, if you replace the springs by rigid bars as we did, you push the amplitude of the gap to infinity. I can illustrate the consequence of doing that by trying to move each of these um, points in the chain. And notice that it's rigid aside from local jiggling, except for one of the two edges where there is a zero energy mode. Now this mode is zero energy in the sense that if its motion does not stretch the springs. Hence you can realize it in the simple toy where the springs have been replaced by unstretchable rigid bars. Ken Lubensky moved on and pointed out that these mechanical modes can be mapped to electronic states in topological insulators in class BD1. This was a very intriguing finding and um, when we learned about it we decided to ask ourselves a simple question. What happens to these zero energy modes that are located at the edge when we try to excite them? That required performing a nonlinear dynamics analysis beyond the linear vibrational modes. The result of that analysis are best illustrated by a simple experiment. Let me tilt this chain and see what happens. As you can see, the edge mode has moved all the way to the other end of the chain. Now, this end is rigid and this end is soft. Notice that the motion can no longer be initiated from this side, but it can now be initiated from the other side here. So I'll tilt it again and see it going back. Let's take a look at how this happens in more detail. The zero energy mode smoothly evolves into a domain wall. A domain wall between two portions of the sample. On the left, these rotors are pointing like this. On the right, they're pointing in this direction. And right at the domain wall, or kink, there is a zero energy mode. Because right at the kink, the gap of the structure is closing. The zero energy mode um, allows the kink to translate down the channel, down the chain. There is an inter two interesting features that this um, chain has. Well, first of all, the motion can only be initiated from one end and not the other, as we saw at any given time, although it can be reversed once you are inside the chain. The second feature is that while kinks are supported, let me turn this around, where the mechanical polarization, or if you prefer the orientation in which these rotors are leaning point inwards, the opposite state in which we try to pull out these rotors and make them anti-aligned doesn't seem to be possible. So the anti-kink is suppressed in this chain. Uh, if I try to make an anti-kink, uh, I, I put stress in the, in the structure and that cannot happen because I have rigid bars. There is however one way out. I'm going to realize it in a Lego model of the chain. Now, 
to start with, the, the Lego model is identical to the one that you've seen. The only thing that changes is the colors. But now I'm going to tweak it a bit. I'm going to remove one of the rigid bars and replace it with a much longer one. Still rigid. But now let's see what happens. I'm going to hold it. I know it's a bit messy. But if you see here, there is a point where the rotors are pointing outwards. And to the right and to the left, uh, they are pointing opposite of each other. So it's an anti-kink. Notice that this anti-kink, there's no state of motion. To show that it's an anti-kink, it's perhaps even easier to notice, to zoom in in the direction of polarization. Now, um, since the mechanical polarization is pointing outward rather than inward, you can imagine that the state that's here is the opposite of a state of motion, like different charges in electrostatics. And so if this is a state that we can count as negative, and we just change the structure smoothly, a structure that previously contained only one soft mode that we can consider a positive charge in this electrostatic analogy, it means that this structure now must have two such zero modes to counterbalance one state of soft stress, so-called, that we put here. And you can see each of the two zero modes on e either side of the, of the chain. Well, I hope that these uh, simple toys have intrigued, in, have intrigued you enough to want to learn more. Here, on my left, you see a two-dimensional lattice with defects called dislocation. You studied recently dislocation in the lecture by Taylor Hughes. Another system is this one that I'm holding in my hand. This is a stack of two-dimensional lattices. This material is soft. And by playing around with its topology, in a way is analogous to what you've seen so far, we can um, control the way this material fails under buckling. If you're interested in learning more about this, please check out the accompanying material to this video, study carefully, and we'll get back together, summarize what you learned, and take a look ahead. Thank you.